Hey, hey, party people, it's Lycona de Chichi, and welcome to the easy peasy guide for Eden's Verse Refulgence Savage, or better known as E8S. To start things off, we have our markers set up like this because they'll become important with later mechanics in the fight. Absolute Zero is our first raid-wide AoE, and it must be mitigated a lot or else you're going to die. This is also the only time she casts it during the entire fight, so it gives you a little preview of the healing difficulty that is to come. She'll then cast Mirror Mirror, which is the first major mechanic we'll see throughout this entire fight. There are three types of mirrors that spawn, a normal mirror with no sheen, a green mirror, and a red mirror. These mirrors copy the mechanics that Shiva does and then recast them in a particular order. A normal mirror will repeat the same mechanic at exactly the same time that Shiva's mechanic goes off. A green mirror will repeat Shiva's mechanic on a delayed timer, while a red mirror repeats Shiva's mechanic with an even longer delay. We'll go over the mirror mechanics in detail a little later and what to look out for when dealing with them. Next, you'll either cast Biting Frost or Driving Frost. Biting Frost will do a 270 degree frontal cleave while Driving Frost will cleave behind her. How I work this out in my brain is that if it's a Driving Frost, I'm thinking of driving forward through the green light. And as you can see, our party moves towards the green mirrors in the middle of this pizza slice, which is the safe spot. Wait for the green mirror to go off and then simply move towards the red mirror into the other pizza slice and wait for the red mirror to go off, then move Shiva back into the middle. If it's Biting Frost, I'm thinking bite her behind or get behind her and put on the brakes, so I'm going to stand near the red mirror. And as you can see here, we go and we stand at the edge of the pizza a slice that's near the red mirror. Wait for the green mirrors to go off and then move away from the red mirror to the pizza slice on the other side. Shiva will then jump back to the middle to cast Diamond Frost. A lot of other mechanics come out here in sequence, so let's go over each of them and how we handle it. A raid-wide AoE will hit the party. One tank and one healer will get an ice debuff that must be cleansed or ensuited off. Then four AoEs will spawn on one tank, one healer, and two DPS. These AoEs should be placed on the letter markers as you see here. Meanwhile, at the edges of the stage, you'll see that this ice AoE indicator spawns. They'll always spawn opposite of each other at north or south, or on the sides at east and west. These are the spots that you'll want to get knocked back into for a later mechanic, so keep that in mind. We handle the mechanics that come afterwards the exact same way, regardless of which cardinal direction they spawn on. Once the AoEs on the four party members explode, they'll each get a heavy debuff which will slow their character's movement speed. And this is also the time for everyone to get into their knockback positions. There's this little diamond in the center of the stage, and if you stand on this, you won't get knocked back off the stage, yet at the same time, you'll be at the right distance away from the edge of the stage in order to handle the next mechanics. We set up conditional knockback positions depending on where the first ice AoE indicator spawned at. Flares will also spawn on one tank and one healer and must be separated on opposite sides of the stage. Thus, we have the healers take the north or the west, while the tanks and the DPS will take the east or the south for the knockbacks. Snowflake AoEs will spawn on the spots where the folks put down their AoEs from before. Those AoEs will cover the stage in a particular pattern, so by placing the AoEs on the markers from before, it allows the party to dodge the Snowflake AoEs when they come out while we get knocked back to the edge of the stage. After the knockback, the remaining two DPS that did not get the stack marker from before will each get a set of three AoEs underneath them. They should dodge out towards either the right or the left sides, keeping their AoEs away from the party that's running back towards the middle. If you run back towards the middle with your AoEs, there's a chance that you'll put them on folks who still have their heavy debuffs, and most likely won't be able to dodge those AoEs in time. Next up, she'll cast either Driving Frost or Biting Frost again, and the thing to note here is that it will always be the opposite mechanic from the first one you got earlier in the fight during Mirror Mirror. For instance, if Shiva casted Driving Frost at the beginning, then here she'll cast Biting Frost. Likewise, if Shiva casted Biting Frost at the beginning, then here she'll cast Driving Frost. Since we know the next mechanic that's coming out for this, the tanks can turn Shiva in such a way that the cleave can always be facing a particular direction. In our case, we always have our tanks face Shiva in an orientation that always cleaves outward, so that way the DPS can continue to DPS without a lot of movement. Next up, she'll cast Double Slap, which is just a simple tank buster, so evoke during the cast. Then we'll have a look away mechanic when she'll go all bright and glowy, so just face your character away from her. 
Next, we'll get either a scythe kick or an axe kick. For scythe kick, you'll want to stand in her hitbox underneath her, and for axe kick, you'll have to disengage and dodge really far out away from her. Keep note of which kick happens here, because the opposite kick will always happen with a later mechanic. It's the same exact principle as driving frost and biting frost that we talked about earlier. One other thing to note here is that scythe kick is basically dynamo, which is a donut AoE. If you're at max DPS range, you can still dodge scythe kick without the need to go stand underneath her. Keep this in mind as it can help out casters and range DPS for when we see this mechanic later in the fight. Shiva will then pop back to the middle to cast Light Rampant, so let's go over what we do here and how we solve these next set of mechanics. First, we have our party stand on the relative cardinal spots on the inside ring. We have two tanks at north, the healers at east, then two DPS at south, and two DPS at the west. Four party members will get linked together with a series of golden chains or tethers. They'll appear randomly on a tank, a healer, and two DPS. The folks who get the chains will need to create an hourglass shape with them, as you see here. We only have the DPS swap their positions if we need to create that hourglass shape. The tanks and the healers will just stay in the same spots. Four towers will spawn on the markers. You can tell how many people you need in the tower by this little light-up indicator. Thus, we can tell that only one person needs to be in each tower. The other four people who did not get the gold chains will each get a tether connecting them to an orb on the outside of the stage. These orbs will always spawn on the cardinal positions. Once you have your tether, these folks will stand in the nearest tower clockwise from where their tether and orb originally spawned. The people with the orbs will soak their towers and then kite their orbs around the outside of the stage. Keep note of the marker you are at when you're standing in your tower because you'll have to get back to that marker to dodge another AoE a bit later. There will also be four Golden Cone AoEs coming from Shiva in the middle, and these are baited on the four people who are closest to her. Thus, whoever gets their orb tethers should be a little bit further away from the center or else you might accidentally bait one of those AoEs. Once the Cone AoEs and four towers resolve, two more towers will spawn at the north and the south side. Each of these towers requires two people to be in it. Thus, from our positions, we already have two Golden Chain people already in their towers, while two Chain folks will have to move into the correct tower. Also, the Gold Chains will activate, meaning that the folks with the Gold Chains can't get closer to the other person that they're chained to. However, you can always move further away. Depending on the configuration of the Hourglass Chains, this will determine which tower the healer and the DPS on the east will need to rotate towards and stand in. You'll always want to move away from your chained partner. How I wrapped it around in my brain is to move towards the empty space created by the hourglass shape. In this case, we called out rotate left, meaning that the two people who are at east and west go left into their respective tower. Keep in mind that this could be a right or left movement depending on who you're chained to and the orientation of the hourglass. After the north and south towers resolve, the folks who are tethered with the orbs should be standing back at their marker. The orbs will turn small, and this is the point where you run into them. Meanwhile, the gold chains on the four people will resolve after the two towers hit. We then have the two people who moved into these towers move back to their original positions to bait a second set of golden cone AoEs. After all that is finished, the folks with three stacks should go into the last tower which needs four people inside it. After that tower resolves, everyone should be alive to handle the next mechanics. Another thing to mention is that many other groups have different strategies for Light Rampant. As long as you satisfy the towers, the orbs, the AoEs, and the chains, it doesn't matter how you handle this as long as everyone ends up with a maximum of 4 stacks and you survive at the end. So work with your group to find out what the best strategy is. Next up, Shiva will cast Mirror Mirror and this is the part where she'll cast the opposite mechanic Scythe Kick or Axe Kick from before. Since we know which kick we'll get, we have two different strategies to maintain DPS uptime, so let's go over those. Four green mirrors will appear at the cardinal positions. If scythe kick was before, then that means axe kick will be here now. Thus, we leave Shiva in the middle and make our way to the one marker, dodge the kick, and then head back to the center to dodge the green mirrors AoE kick. If it's an axe kick from before, then we know that we can stack under her for scythe kick. Thus, to maintain some DPS uptime, we pull Shiva to the closest north mirror. We stack underneath her for the first kick, and after that goes off, the four melee folks can stand under the mirror to dodge the mirror's kick while still hitting the boss. The range and healers can stand under one of the other mirrors behind Shiva, that way they can continue to DPS as well. Just before the mirror mechanics go off, there will be four stack markers that appear on either the tanks or the healers or on the DPS. This this is a tricky mechanic because if you look at Shiva's halo on her head, she'll either have one orb or four orbs. One orb means that it's a true mechanic, meaning that you'll need to stack with your partner and take that AoE stack normally. 
If there are four orbs orbiting around Shiva's head, that means it's a false stack, and you'll have to spread out away from each other. We set up conditional positions on where we move to if it's a stack or spread for either Scythe Kick or Axe Kick. We decided to stay with our group pairs like we did during E6S. You'll need a partner to stand with in case it's a true stack mechanic, so coordinate this with your party to resolve these mechanics before we head into the next phase. Shiva will jump north and create two circles on the stage to stand in. These sides will determine which platform you'll spawn on during the ad phase. Split your party up into two teams consisting of a tank, a healer, and two DPS. One team will want to stand in the left circle while the other team stands in the right circle. You'll also want to experiment with your team compositions here. While both platforms have the same mechanics and ads, the order in which those ads will spawn will be different between the left and the right platforms. However, each right and left platform will always spawn their order of ads consistently, meaning that if you're on the left side, your platform will always spawn the ads in the same order every time. Same for the right platform. On these platforms, the ads will spawn on the outside and then travel slowly into the middle. You must kill all the ads before they reach the crystal in the middle, or else the flood of light bar will increase. If that bar reaches 100% on either team, it's a wipe. Not only that, but by killing all the ads during this phase, when you come back down to fight Shiva again, your party will get a DPS buff which is needed to meet the minimum DPS check. There are three types of adds that spawn and one untargetable ad that tethers to the crystal in the middle and doesn't move. The Aqueous Aether has a high amount of HP and must be stunned in order to DPS it down. The Electric Aethers have low HP, but they damage you when you hit them. The Earthen Aethers will cast Stone Skin as soon as it spawns and must be silenced or burst down with DPS. For the untargetable ad, you'll want to intercept its tether throughout the entire phase. Four tethers will spawn on each platform, so each person will need to pick up a tether at least once. There's also a little personal AoE around the person with the tether when it goes off, so you don't want to be standing near them or on top of each other for this. These are the orders that the ad spawn in for both the left and the right platforms. Pause the video if you need to take a closer look for the side you're fighting on. Another thing to note here is that if you mess up on the ads and build a little bit of light, there's no need to wipe it up because you'll still make it into the final phase to practice the next set of mechanics. So always continue onward until your group handles all the mechanics properly and have reached the enrage. Once you reach the enrage, then you'll have to clean up the ad phase to get the buff and go for the clear. After you've successfully taken down all the ads for both teams, Shiva will warp you back into the main stage for a cutscene that really gets old after you've seen it like 50 times. Nonetheless, it's a great nod to the story between Shiva and Horace Vogar, but for now we have to get ready for the final phase. If you did the ad phase correctly, you'll get this buff that helps with DPS. Most groups will likely need this buff to meet the minimum DPS check, but with more gear and weapons, this buff will eventually become less needed. When you come out of the ad phase, you'll still be near your groups on the opposite sides of the stage. To make it easier on ourselves, we just stayed within our group configurations for the rest of the fight. But near the end, there's a possible member switch between the groups for a later mechanic, so keep that in mind for now. Two Ockmorns will soon come out, and will target the two people with the highest aggro meter so both tanks must be the number one and number two on the aggro list. Shiva's auto attacks will also follow this principle as well. Another thing to note is that whenever she has her dragon out, she'll auto attack both people who are on the number one and number two aggro list. Thus, tanks should remain at the number one and number two aggro list for the rest of the fight. Each team will take three Akmorn hits, and then everyone stacks in the middle for more Nafa. During the Akmorns, you'll see these green and blue debuffs that appear on your team. This means that you'll need to stay with your team for all of the Akmorn hits, because if you try to play the hero and switch groups, you're going to die. Next up, Shiva will cast Mirror Mirror, which will spawn three mirrors. A normal mirror, a green mirror, and a red mirror. If you remember from before, the normal mirror will recast Shiva's ability at the exact same time. The green mirror has a delay, while the red mirror has an even greater delay. The green mirror will always spawn north, while the red and normal mirrors can switch sides. Shiva will then cast one of her wings, which will AoE half the stage. It's the exact same mechanic as Kef because wings from 08S. The trick here is that you also have to figure out which half of the stage the normal mirror's AoE will be cast on. Combine both Shiva and the mirror's AoEs to determine the safe spot. Now that we know where the safe spot is, this mechanic becomes really simple once you know the placement of the mirrors. Check out this diagram here. To dodge the next set of AoEs, we simply move one quadrant over each time it goes off, either clockwise or anti-clockwise. The direction of movement depends on the positions of the mirrors. What helps me figure out on which direction I need to go on the stage is that I think red light to green light, referencing the mirrors. If you draw an arrow going from the green mirror to the red mirror, this is the clockwise or anti-clockwise direction 
that you'll be going. Simply move to the next quadrant over after each AoE and you'll dodge this mechanic every single time. Next up, Shiva will cast Worm's Lament. A dragon head will always spawn north on the outer part of the stage. The tanks and the healers will always get red debuffs while the DPS will always get blue debuffs. These debuffs each have different timers on them. How this mechanic works is that the person with the red debuff that has the shortest timer will run to the dragon head and make it explode. The explosion also puts down a small white AoE. You've seen these before in T5 and T9 if you've done those fights. Then the person with the blue debuff will grab their little puddle to cleanse their blue debuff. The cycle repeats until all party members cleanse their debuff and the dragon head disappears. How we handle this mechanic is that we have the healer who has the red debuff and the shortest timer stand on the dragon head which will make it explode. The explosion is very large, so the rest of the party will need to be within Shiva's hitbox during the dragon head explosions. The healer should come back to the party and then Shiva will use her wings to AoE one side of the stage. The side of the stage that she covers with her AoE is always on the side where the dragon head moves into. The dragon head will begin to travel around the edge of the stage in either a clockwise or anti-clockwise direction. After Shiva's wing AoE ends is when the next two people should start to run out and resolve their debuffs. The person who has the next red debuff should run to the dragon and explode its face, while the person with the first blue debuff should run to the last explosion that happen and pick up their little AoE circle to cleanse their blue debuff. Each time Shiva's wings go off is when the next set of red and blue people go out to resolve their debuffs. Do this until the last blue person goes out and cleanses their debuff, and you've just got past this mechanic. Something that's helped me out for this is that instead of looking at your timer and figuring out when you have to do your stuff later, just wait for your debuff timer to get down to around 10 seconds left. If your timer has about 10 seconds left on it, you need to go resolve your mechanic now. After the last person with the blue debuff cleanses their debuff, everyone should stack right in the middle underneath Shiva. Shiva will then turn the entire stage to ice, and if you move, you're going to slide off the stage. She'll either do a twin silence, which is a dodge front to back, or a twin stillness, which is a dodge back to front. You can move back to front or forward and back, once her cast bar is finished, because that's the snapshot timing for this mechanic. Also, be careful not to move too early. Shiva casts her ability while the stage is still iced. Wait for the stage to de-ice and then dodge accordingly. She'll then cast Double Slap, which is a standard tank buster, and then we're gonna get ready for space lasers. So everyone should get right back underneath her in the middle. She'll summon her Ace Velgar again, and you'll want to move out of the middle as soon as you see the wings come out. That's the moment the game snapshots your space laser location on your character, so you can move to a safe position once you see it. I use this inner ring to gauge a good distance away from the center to be outside of those space lasers once they hit in the middle. Next up, she'll cast Mirror Mirror again, and we call these the knockback mirrors. A green and a red mirror will spawn opposite of each other. Shiva will then jump to one side, and we just follow her and stand behind her. Once her wings go off, all we do is run towards the green mirror, then get knocked across the stage towards the red mirror, and call it a day. But there's a sneaky little trick that Shiva does, so let's go over the details and how we handle the knockback mirrors. As Shiva jumps to the edge of the stage, we get behind her while she starts casting Hallowed Wings. Then we look for the green mirror and line up in a certain order for the first knockback. The four closest people to the green mirror will each get a magic vulnerability debuff on them. When you get knocked back to the other side, the four closest people to the red mirror will also get that debuff. Also keep in mind that the tanks need to be in front, between the mirror and the party to mitigate the knockback damage. You can kind of loosely stand in two groups with the tanks at the back and front. After the green mirror knocks you back, you'll want to kind of stand still. Everyone gets knocked back the same distance, so if nobody moves, the four people who were further away from the green mirror, who didn't get the magic bone debuff, are already the four closest people to the red mirror. For me, since I'm in the second group, I use our friend here, the diamond marker on the stage, to gauge the distance on where I need to stand. Any further away from the green mirror than this, there's a risk getting knocked off the stage, so be mindful of your positions here. Also keep in mind that there are several different DPS uptime strategies that require more coordination with your group. For instance, we have our off tank pop his invuln, and he takes both mirror hits just so we can position Shiva better for the healers and DPS. There was even a strategy I saw while I was writing this guide where you don't even have to get knocked back from the mirror, but I hear the timing has to be absolutely perfect. So work with your group to see what works best. Next up, Shiva will cast Mirror Mirror again, and we'll call these the Look Away Mirrors. First, we'll drag Shiva to a normal mirror, and then she'll do her Look Away mechanic. But because we know that the normal mirror copies her mechanic, 
mechanic here, we can face our characters to the side to dodge it like this. After that, we just have our party stay here at the edge and look towards the outside of the stage to dodge the green mirror's cast. Next, we'll either get a stay at the edge or move into the middle mechanic determined by the amount of orbs she has on her head. If it's one orb on her head, that means we need to stay at the edge and look outwards to dodge the red mirror's stun. If it's four orbs, the party needs to run to the center of the stage, but just a little bit past the halfway point. The red mirrors will go off on the sides, and you want to be looking towards the outside of the stage like this. What helps me out here is having your enemy list on your HUD. It will display the cast bars of the green and red mirrors, so you can know the exact moment when you need to look away. You only get stunned if you're looking at the mirrors when the cast bar reaches 100%. It's instant, so anytime during the cast bars or immediately afterwards, you can hit the boss. For those who don't have the enemy list on your HUD, it's about two GCDs before you have to look away in between each stun. After all that is done, she'll either do Embittered Dance, so dodge under her and then away from her, or Spiteful Dance, which is a dodge away first and then go underneath her. One thing to note here for casters and range DPS, once you've dodged her kick on the outside, just stay at max caster or DPS range and continue hitting the boss. There's no reason to go back underneath her unless you're a melee. Next up, Shiva will spawn just one red mirror and we all want to stack in the middle for space lasers again. Dodge the lasers same as before when the wings come out, but this time you'll need to dodge into your four-man Aukmorn groups. Also make sure that your groups are on opposite sides of Shiva when you're dodging, and in this case for us, we just call it the left and right groups. Once you dodge the first space laser, the red mirror will then recast space lasers on everyone again. So each group will need to wait here a moment and then rotate 90 degrees around Shiva, either clockwise or anti-clockwise. Whichever direction your group chooses, just make sure that you're not going on top of each other when you do this dodge. Don't forget, you can check out the enemy list and the cast bar of the red mirror to see when you need to move. Once you get into your new positions, four Aukmorns will go off on each group, and then you want to stack back in the middle for a Morn of Next up is Isolate Dragon Song, and as usual, a lot of things happen here, so let's go over each mechanic in detail. Each of the four DPS will want to stand on their own letter marker on the intracardinal positions, while the tanks and the healers will stand on their cardinal positions. One tank stands at north while the other one takes south, and one healer will stand at the east while the other one takes west. Two tanks and two DPS will get the ice debuff, and only the DPS need to be cleansed. Leaving the ice debuffs on the tanks is critical for making this mechanic work. So now, let's first go over what the DPS need to do next, and then we'll come back and explain what the tanks and healers need to do. The four DPS will each get an AoE around them, and you'll want to place them on this little line at the edge of the stage behind your letter markers. Once they explode, they give you a heavy debuff, slowing your movement speed. You'll want to make your way back to the closest tank on your side who will be frozen at this point. Be sure not to pop sprint here, because you'll need it in a moment. Shiva will then knock back everyone, and a pair of DPS will end up at the north side and at the south side of the stage. Now is the time to pop sprint. AoEs will appear on each DPS like in the first phase, so you'll want to move outwards towards the sides. Three AoEs will spawn on each DPS, so you need to dodge these with sprint. If you don't have sprint here, you probably won't dodge these AoEs. Also, you don't want to double back, because if you do, you're going to die in one of your AoEs, so just keep moving forward. For instance, since I was at the D marker, I run out to the left side, baiting the AoEs and making my way back to the D marker. It's the same principle for every DPS. Yes. Just dodge towards the outside and make your way back to your original position at your marker. For the tanks and the healers, they'll get the gold chains on them, and four towers will spawn in the middle. The pattern is always the same, so if you're standing in your cardinal positions, you won't have to move. The ice debuff on the tanks will go off, freezing them in place so they don't get knocked back. Two new towers will spawn at the east and west sides, so the healers will get knocked back into these towers. Healers must take their own tower and then make their way back to their original positions. Once the tanks unfreeze, they'll get a little extra mechanic from Shiva. They must look for the halo around Shiva's head, and again, it's a stack or spread. It's the same as before, if it's a true stack, meaning one orb on her head, only the two tanks will stack with each other. If it's four orbs, then the tanks will not need to stack and take their individual AoEs. Right after all that resolves and the DPS are back at their markers, four people with the two stacks of light will need a stand in the last tower. But at this point, you don't want to forget your original positions, because next, Shiva will cast House of Light, which will put eight coronal AoEs on each party member, so everyone should be back in their original spots when we started Isolate Dragon Song. Also, don't be too close in the middle, as you might accidentally overlap somebody else's AoE cone. 
After you take those AoE hits, the whole party will want to make their way to the edge of the stage. We chose south in this case, but you can choose any side as long as you're at the edge. She'll cast Mirror Mirror, which will place down a red mirror at the edge of the stage. Meanwhile, the party should stack at the edge and get ready for the stage to turn into ice. She then casts Space Lasers, but you want to be patient here and don't move just yet. The ice stage will go away and the red mirror will cast ice stage again. Wait for the wings to come out on Shiva and then zip across the stage to the other side. Make sure not to move after you've dodged this once. You can use your gap closers here when she comes after you, but don't move even if you can't hit her. Wait for the ice stage to disappear again and then bring her back into the middle. Shiva will begin to cast Worm's Lament again with a side of friendly Akmorans and Mornifaz. So let's go over what happens here. Stack up in your left and right groups. We already saw the red and blue debuffs from this mechanic earlier and what they do. However, for this version of Worm's Lament, red debuffs will always come out on the tanks while blue debuffs will always spawn on the healers. The DPS, however, will also get two red and two blue debuffs as well, but which DPS they'll spawn on will be random. Thus, the DPS have a little extra job to do here. Each group will need to have two reds and two blue debuffs in it to satisfy Worm's Lament. So if two DPS in one group both have the same colored debuff, then one DPS from each group will have to switch into the other group. So how we handle this is that we designate a single DPS from each group to swap groups if the debuffs don't line up properly. For me and our team, I know that Pally and I are in the same group. So if I see that we both have the same debuff color, we call out DPS switch. Since I've been designated with switching groups, I'll go to the right group while Tiger comes over to the left. Another easy thing for me to look at, since that I know that Tiger and Jun Koi are in the same group, I can just look at the two bottom debuff colors and check to see if they're the same color. Once again, if they're the same color, we need to switch. If they're different, we need to chill in our groups. Check with your party and plan out for this switch if needed. Now that everyone is in their correct group, during the cast of the first Akmorns, two dragon heads will spawn, one at the north and one at the south. They'll start rotating around the stage either clockwise or anti-clockwise, so keep an eye out for them. Once the Akmorn hits five times, the tanks with the red debuff markers will need to run out and pop their dragon heads, and then come back into the middle to stack for the Morn of Fa. Meanwhile, the rest of the party must stack underneath Shiva while the tanks are popping their dragon heads. The dragon's AoEs are huge, and if you're not directly underneath the boss, there's a high chance that you'll accidentally take an AoE hit and die. After the Morn of Fa hits, the healers will run out to cleanse their blue debuffs with the AoEs placed down. At the same time, the party should split back up into your groups. Then the healers will join back into their groups a moment later. Six Akmorns will hit each group and after that, the DPS with the red debuffs will run out and pop their own dragon head while the party gets underneath Shiva, same as before. Mornafa will then hit the whole party and then the last two DPS with the blue debuffs will run out and get them cleansed. Stack back with your groups to take seven Akmorn hits and then get in the middle for the final Mornafa and you're good to go. There are different strategies you can use here to mitigate the damage as they hurt a lot. For our group, we eventually decided to pop lots of stuff on the first round, let the tank eat the second Mortifa alone with an invuln, and then pop all of our CDs again for the final round. Whichever way you and your team handle this last bit, keep in mind that you're going to need everything, so do what works best for you and your party composition. After you're done with that, Shiva throws out Mirror Mirror again and takes out both her wings and cleaves half the stage. You'll want to get behind her and not die to her first wing cleaves, but then you'll notice that all of the red mirrors spawn everywhere, so this is her enrage. Keep on the DPS, and if you stayed cool under pressure, congratulations, you've just got your first clear of Eden's Verse Refulgence Savage, also known as E8S. First off, I want to thank my raid team and the big brains over at Unreal Aussies who helped us out with the strategies and rotations so we could get through Shiva and clear on week two. And a very special thanks to Venom, my raid leader whose videos you saw on the tank perspective, as well as him taking the time to explain all of these mechanics in detail to make sure that all of the information in this guide is accurate. And I'd say this raid tier was pretty fun. Uh, the fights are different, they're exciting. I hear that SE put one developer on each tier to make it uh, different and uh, unique and I really like how uh, every time you get further into the fight there's a new little thing that comes up and that you have to solve and that you have to deal with. So I think SE's done a really great job with this expansion and I can't wait to see the final tier when it comes out. And if you think this guide helped out your team give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more sh Final Fantasy shenanigans and until next time I'm Lakona Dechichi and keep on adventuring. Fucking brilliant. Good job, guy. Oh, I'm fucking retarded! <laughs> 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 <laughs>